Hi, my name is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. I am Director of Pulmonary Pathology at the Cleveland Clinic. And today I am going to talk to you about a very important issue of national public health importance in the United States, and that is the epidemic of lung disease that's associated with vaping. Um, so the title of this talk is Vaping Under the Microscope, What Do Lung Biopsies Tell Us? And the title is made in this way because we are going to focus on what we see under the microscope in lung biopsies in pa patients who are sick from vaping. Just a little bit of an introduction for vaping. What does it mean to vape? To vape is to inhale vapor, and that's, that's why the word uh, is vape, is to inhale vapor through the mouth from a usually battery-operated electronic device. And the classic um, example is an electronic cigarette. And that device is made in a way that, that it heats up the fluid that's within it, the vape fluid, and then it vaporizes this liquid to make the, 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 um, the vapor that's inhaled by the, by the person. And so on the left-hand side of this slide, you see an example of a vaping device or an electronic cigarette which has a battery and then there's a place to hold the fluid and then there's a place where the vapor comes out. Um, and on the right hand side you see um, what happens when, when somebody is vaping. In fact, this is a kind of trick that people do which is called the dragon. There's lots of interesting sort of subculture things about vaping but we won't go into that today. We are purely focused on the lung biopsy uh, aspects. Um, and the, the beginning of the medical side of this um, vaping associated lung disease uh, came from this paper, this very recent paper by Jennifer Layden et al, um, which is entitled Pulmonary Illness Related to E-Cigarette Use in Illinois and Wisconsin, a preliminary report. This was published in the New England Journal of Medicine just a few weeks ago and pretty much legitimized the idea that you can get severe lung disease uh, related to the use of these e-cigarettes or vaping. And soon after that, there was a paper uh, entitled Outbreak of Electronic Cigarette Associated Acute Lipoid Pneumonia, and we'll come back to this term, Acute Lipoid Pneumonia, North Carolina, July to August 2019. And this was in the MMWR journal, uh, which is published, I think, by the CDC. So these two very big and important papers came out in the medical literature and signaled to us that we are really dealing with a real problem here in terms of lung illness uh, caused by vaping. I am today going to focus on uh, one of the first studies looking at pathology of vaping. So when people with vaping who, who vape get sick, they come to a doctor and as part of the investigation that goes on in these patients, some patients have been getting biopsies of their lungs. So little pieces of their lung tissue are taken out and they're sent to a pathologist and the pathologist gets to see what's actually going on inside the lungs. So this paper is about to come out in press uh, in the American Journal of Clinical Pathology. Uh, this was a collaboration between the Cleveland Clinic, between pathologists and um, uh, clinicians from the Respiratory Institute, as well as uh, pathologists elsewhere, including Vanderbilt. And this paper is currently um, in production and, and will come out soon in a, in, a, in a matter of days. And we're going to focus on the findings that we found in these eight patients. So this was a series of eight patients who vaped, then got sick, and then were seen by their doctors. All eight of them got um, biopsies. Seven of them were transbronchial biopsies, and one was a surgical lung biopsy. Interestingly, most of these patients presented either with cough or dyspnea, which is shortness of breath, or with fever, and most of them were young men. In fact, all of them were men and most of them were young. The one slightly older patient actually died of disease. The other seven patients recovered from their illness after being treated uh, with um, corticosteroid therapy. So the first slide I'm going to show you is the CT scans from these patients and you can see that they are highly abnormal. Um, now CT scans, um, when they look at normal lungs, should look black. So the lungs um, are filled with air and the characteristic look of a normal lung is that it looks black on a high resolution CT scan. Instead, you can see that these lungs, each one of them is from a different patient. So for example, the one in part A is different from the one in part D. These are four very different patients, but you can see the look is kind of similar. There is bilateral lung abnormality, meaning on both sides, there's a kind of haziness in the lung that's called ground glass opacities. And then there's a more dense kind of abnormality in some areas that is called consolidation. 
So this is generally what's been reported in the recent literature as to what the CT scans look like when you, when you take them from patients who have vaping associated uh, pulmonary illness is that they have bilateral ground glass opacities and that was the case in all of our patients. Now when we look at the biopsy findings, one of the findings that we uh, noticed was this finding called organizing pneumonia. And this is what happens when the lung is injured by some kind of a noxious agent. This is also what happens when the patient has a uh, pneumonia of any cause and then heals in an abnormal way. And the characteristic finding that you see in that is this structure called a fibroblast plug, uh, which is seen here and down here. So the fibroblast plug is, is a sort of polyp-like growth within the alveoli that is filled with fibroblasts. And what's trying to happen here is that the lung is trying to heal itself from a, a, a form of acute lung injury. So organizing pneumonia was seen in some of our cases. Then some other cases that we saw showed diffuse alveolar damage. And diffuse alveolar damage is a very severe form of lung injury that is seen in patients who get, um, again, uh, whose lungs are damaged by some kind of a toxin. And usually this is the ki kind of uh, pathology that you see in patients who end up on a ventilator or, or who have to go to the ICU. So it's a very, very severe form of lung injury. And the characteristic finding that you see in this is uh, what we call hyaline membranes, which are these pink ribbon-like structures that you see in the middle of the picture. Uh, I will mention that the one patient um, in this series who died also had diffuse alveolar damage in his lungs. Now, the other finding that we found in some of these cases was of, uh, the, the presence of fibrin or fibrinous exudates within the alveoli. So within the lumen of the alveolus were these fibrinous exudates, which are these pink little blobs that you see uh, within the air spaces here. And then, which is the most controversial part of this uh, pathology and I, I think is going to engender a lot of debate in, in coming months, if not years, is the presence of a particular kind of cell called a macrophage. And the macrophage is a cell that within the lung just eats up debris. And, and that's the function of the macrophage, to wander within the lung and eat any kind of debris and then clear it out from the lung parenchyma. So that's what they normally do. Um, and in normal lungs, you don't have too many macrophages. They're just an occasional one wandering around the lung. But in the vaping associated pulmonary illness, some cases have a lot of macrophages within the alveoli. So I'll point them out. These cells within the air spaces, like the one that the arrow is showing now is a macrophage. This one is a macrophage and this one is a macrophage. Now the interesting part about it is that there is a theory that vaping associated lung illness is caused by some sort of a lipid or an oily substance. People have, have brought up vitamin E that's present in the vape fluid in some cases. And that oily or lipid substance, the theory goes, is damaging the lung. And therefore, you should see lipid in the lung in some form. So what people have done is they have stained the washout that you do during the bronchoscopic procedure. That's called bronchoalveolar lavage fluid. So they have stained that lavage fluid for a marker of lipid. And that's called oil red O. And the oil red O is positive in some cases. So people say, well, our theory is correct because we think there's lipid and when we we stain for lipid in the fluid in these cases, it's positive. So this is a lipid pneumonia. Unfortunately, that theory is not entirely true. Now, when you get a lipid substance that's aspirated into the lung from an outside source, that's called exogenous lipoid pneumonia. And the typical features of exogenous lipoid pneumonia are not seen in these biopsies. So we haven't seen any features of exogenous lipoid pneumonia in our biopsy series. And the other series that's come out from the Mayo Clinic also has not seen features of exogenous lipoid pneumonia. Do these macrophages have lipid in them? I think the answer is yes, they do have lipid, but the lipid might be coming from an endogenous source, that is from dead and dying cells in the lung itself, not from an exogenous source. So that's one major finding that's going to be a center of debate in, in the coming days. Now here's another uh, way to look at macrophages, and this is an immunohistochemical stain for CD68. And CD68 is a marker that's present on macrophages. So everything that you see here that's brown is a macrophage. And clearly, there's a lot of macrophages there. So clearly, there are macrophages in these lungs. Clearly, they are increased in some cases. Some of them have lipid. Some of them look foamy. But they do not have features of exogenous lipoid pneumonia. Now, you might wonder, what are those features? So let me show you an example. And this is taken from the paper that's just about to come out. On the left hand side, I'm showing you a picture from a patient who was aspirating mineral oil into their lungs. And typically mineral oil is taken by people for, who are constipated. So they're trying to uh, 
help with that symptom. But in some cases, instead of going into the GI tract, that mineral oil goes into the lungs and that's clearly an exogenous lipoid pneumonia. And if you look at the picture, the, the vacuoles in the macrophages in exogenous lipoid pneumonia have a very characteristic appearance. Some of them are big, some of them are small, they're varying sizes. These are large vacuoles and they are a coarse, have a kind of coarse look. In contrast, the picture on the right hand side is from a patient who had vaping associated pulmonary illness. These macrophages also have a foamy look, but they do not have the coarse large vacuoles and the uh, variation in size that's seen in exogenous lipoid pneumonia. So this is very important to point out that our findings in these patients with the vaping associated lung disease do not match up with the findings that you typically see in exogenous lipoid pneumonia. And this is a very important finding that's come out only in recent days. I will point out there's another study that's out that's, uh, that I referred to um, in previous slides and that's from Butt et al. Yasmin Butt was the first author. And this has come out as a letter to the editor in the New England Journal of Medicine and that's entitled Pathology of Vaping Associated Lung Injury. And to my knowledge, there is no other study other than ours that has looked at biopsies from uh, patients who vaped. Interestingly, the findings from the, um, from the Mayo Clinic study is almost identical to what we are uh, seeing in our study and that is acute lung injury patterns, some degree of macrophages, but, and I'm quoting here from their paper, none of our cases showed histologic evidence of exogenous lipoid pneumonia. So it seems like two different groups wor working independently of each other in different states on different patients have come to the same conclusion that this is not an exogenous lipoid pneumonia in biopsy specimens. The um, uh, Mayo Clinic study was then uh, taken up by the, by the New York Times who wrote a, uh, an article on this and the article was titled Lung Damage from Vaping Resembles Chemical Burns, report says. And I, I agree with that. Chemical burns also cause acute lung injury patterns just like we are seeing with vaping. So it is, it is very likely that there's some sort of a chemical in the vape fluid uh, that's aerosolized and perhaps mixed with heat is causing lung, lung damage uh, in these patients. So I'll sum up here. The lung biopsy findings from patients with vaping associated pulmonary illness, what are the biopsy findings? First, we are seeing acute lung injury patterns. Second, we are seeing no evidence of exogenous lipoid pneumonia. And third, the findings that we are seeing are not specific for vaping. In other words, a pathologist that looks at this biopsy without knowing that the patient vaped can't tell just from the biopsy findings that this is related to vaping. Any other chemical injury and many other uh, findings in lung pathology can look similar to this, including drug-induced lung injury. For, for example, there's a drug called amiodarone that's given for heart rhythm abnormalities that causes very similar pathologic findings. I would like to give a message to pathologists, which is kind of a summary message. In coming days and months, you will see lung biopsies from patients who fell ill after, after vaping. You must familiarize yourself with the acute lung injury patterns that are being reported in these patients and seek help from lung pathology experts before using the label lipoid pneumonia. This label is probably not correct. So if, you're, if you think you want to call something lipoid pneumonia, make sure you're, you've shown the biopsy to an expert. I do also have a message for primary care physicians and pulmonary physicians who will be caring for these patients in, in coming months. My message is just consider the possibility of vaping associated pulmonary illness, especially in young people with cough, dyspnea or fever. Now, one thing I'll point out here is some of these patients are young people who were not previously ill and are coming in with a febrile illness with fever. So especially in the flu season, this, this can be very confusing. You might think that the patient has a flu, but doesn't respond to, to treatment. And in those patients, it becomes especially important to ask for a history. Are they vaping and could, could this possibly be vaping related? And finally, I'll end with a message to the public. We are still learning a lot about vaping. We do not know what exactly causes it. What, what is the chemical responsible for vaping? But here's the message. Smoking, we know, is terrible for your health. We know it causes lung cancer and many, many other illnesses. But vaping is also risky. Initial pathology studies, including ours and the one from the Mayo Clinic, have confirmed that vaping can cause lung damage, and that's the uh, message that I'd like to leave you with. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>